let me discuss about the unstable angina unstable angina as just now i was discussing the basic pathogenesis so what is the basic pathogenesis here the basic pathogenesis is the plaque rupture right so because of this plaque rupture what is happening there are two events which get stimulated the first thing what gets stimulated is platelet aggregation and second event what is happening is the activation of the coagulation system activation of the coagulation system both of these will cause what both of these will cause the occlusion of the coronary artery right occlusion of the coronary artery <clears throat> and remember your unstable angina it is a type of acute coronary syndrome now the question comes what do you mean by this acute coronary syndrome if you take this classification of the coronary artery diseases coronary artery disease we classify into two that is either presence of the angina or angina pectoris and the other thing is development of myocardial infarction now you take this angina how did we classify this angina we classified this angina into stable angina prince metal angina and unstable angina so this is how we classify stable prince metal and unstable angina whereas you take mi myocardial infarction we classify this into st elevation mi and non st elevation mi right what are we doing here based on the ecg finding if there is st segment elevation in the ecg we call it as st elevation mi and if there is st depression we call this as non st elevation mi so you take these three components right if you take these three components that is unstable angina st elevation mi and non st elevation mi these three together constitutes the acute coronary syndrome right coronary artery disease we classify this into angina and myocardial infarction angina again stable prince metal unstable myocardial infarction based on ecg into stemi and nstemi and these three unstable angina st elevation mi non st elevation mi they come under what is called as the acute coronary syndrome and remember in unstable angina there is no st elevation right in unstable angina there is no st elevation now in unstable angina if there is an acute attack what is the treatment of choice remember even in case of acute attack of your unstable angina we give sublingual nitroglycerin right so in stable angina or uh, your typical angina we have discussed that if the individual has an acute attack we have to give sublingual nitrate similarly in unstable angina also if the individual has acute attack what we give is your the sublingual nitroglycerin then after that once the patient is little stabilized in unstable angina what we give is these patients of this unstable angina they are given beta blockers right and if the individual is not responding to your beta blockers in case of ineffectiveness to this particular beta blockers we can also add the calcium channel blockers right we can also add the calcium channel blockers now to decrease the mortality on long term basis the patient is started on anti aggregants 
because unstable angina is mainly because of your platelet aggregation so in order to reduce the mortality of these patients with your unstable angina what you do is you start on the anti aggregants and you also start on the statins okay so one group of drugs we give is nitrates for acute attacks and to prevent further attacks we give beta blockers and if the individual is not showing much effectiveness with beta blockers we also give calcium channel blockers to decrease the mortality of the individual what we should add in these individual is we should also add your anti aggregants which are nothing but your anti platelets along with that you give high dose statins right along with that you give high dose statins now you take your anti aggregants which is the very important anti aggregant or anti platelet which we use is we use this particular aspirin right we use this particular aspirin aspirin it is immediately started at a loading dose of 162 to 325 mg and then it is continued at a dose of 81 to 162 mg so that should be the dosage of your aspirin now apart from aspirin which is an anti aggregant we have one more anti aggregant that is nothing but your clopidogrel prasugrel and ticagrelor these are also your anti aggregants okay now apart from these anti anti, anti aggregants so what are these anti aggregants we are using aspirin and as well as the clopidogrel in that same clopidogrel family we also have prasugrel and as well as the ticagrelor so in this anti aggregants we are having aspirin plus clopidogrel aspirin plus clopidogrel we have some more drugs which we can give in these patients with the unstable angina the other group of drugs which can be given in these patients with the unstable angina is they are inhibitors of glycoprotein 2b and 3a inhibitors right they are your inhibitors of glycoprotein 2b and 3a glycoprotein now what are the examples of these drugs these drugs they include apsicimab tirofiban and eptifibatide so these are the drugs which are adjunct to your anti aggregants right so these inhibitors of glycoprotein 2b3a are acting as adjunct to your anti aggregants that is aspirin and as well as clopidogrel and remember in these patients with the unstable angina along with this sublingual nitrate in acute attack along with beta blockers calcium channel blockers anti aggregants high dose statins we are also giving inhibitors of glycoprotein 2b3a glycoprotein inhibitors now we also should give anticoagulants why why we should give anticoagulants is because what is the basic pathogenesis happening here in unstable angina there is also activation of your coagulation system so in order to neutralize this activation of the coagulation system you should give this anticoagulants and remember which is the preferred anticoagulant in this unstable angina it will be your low molecular weight heparin low molecular weight heparin is a preferred anticoagulant in this unstable angina and we also have other alternative drugs the other alternative drugs they include fondaparinox this is also an anticoagulant and we have a direct thrombin inhibitors these are these are the newer drugs these direct thrombin inhibitors these includes bivaluridin right so remember this is a direct thrombin inhibitor right 
So these are the group of drugs what are given in patients with your unstable angina. In at acute attack, sublingual nitrates. For preventing further attacks, beta blockers. In those individuals where the individual is not showing response to beta blockers, add calcium channel blockers. Along with that, you give anti-aggregants that is your aspirin and clopidogrel and you should also give the inhibitors of glycoprotein 2b 3a system and you should also neutralize the activated coagulation system by giving anticoagulation the preferred drug will be low molecular weight heparin and the other alternative drugs will be your fondaparinox and as well as bivaluridin which is a direct thrombin inhibitor let me tell you one important point here thrombolysis right thrombolysis for thrombolysis we use certain drugs like streptokinase urokinase altiplase retiplase and tenecteplase these are the drugs which are used for thrombolysis but let me tell you a point here in unstable angina thrombolysis is absolutely contraindicated right in unstable angina thrombolysis is absolutely contraindicated thrombolysis is indicated in st elevation mi not in case of the unstable angina why because thrombolysis is absolutely contraindicated because the risk of thrombolysis is more than benefit of thrombolysis in patients with unstable angina so that is the reason why thrombolysis is contraindicated and what are your thrombolytic drugs? Thrombolytic drugs include streptokinase, urokinase, altiplase, retiplase and tenecteplase. So these are few points about your unstable angina.